Um, well, we got we kind of got away from the the easy segue, so I'm gonna do a harder one this time. But, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to talk about you know you you were just talking about Charlie and like a l- couple of things that he has associated with his identity as a player and and that kind of thing. And we talked about this before without actually doing an explicit episode on it. So I want to do that uh, today is talking about how you can stand out as a player because it's probably one of the most common something along the lines of how do I stand out? Like I'll get kids asking. Uh, how do I make an impact in tryouts or how do I get my coach to notice me? Or I feel like my coach doesn't notice me or whatever. So it's some version of how do how can I stand out? Mm-hmm. And so we've talked about this. You have talked about this quite a bit and, and both of us kind of are, have been on the same page uh, with the idea of everyone, when you watch hockey at any level now, with the exception maybe of the, of the NHL, the OHL, not as much, but as you get lower, it gets more and more, um, common to see all players trying to be the same guy. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a bit of a, a function of not being taught properly or coaches not emphasizing the importance of roles or having an identity for yourself um, or that there are things that are more or equally valuable than just being the top guy that gets all the goals all the time. And I, th- I think that's something that we sh- I want to dissect a little bit more today to give people you know, kind of a a more defined way of looking at what we mean when we say, you know, how can you stand out? Because there's there's not one way. But when you say, how do you stand out? It's usually like, get a hat trick, you'll stand out. You know, and and that's something my dad used to say to me too a lot is like, well, if like nobody cares if you're scoring. And it's like, yeah, that's true. You can do whatever you want if you score. It's like, that's actually true. You can. If you're the guy that, if you're the guy that scores all the time, it's like there's guys I used to play with that were a pain in the ass but they kept scoring. So yeah. they would just keep getting ice. They would keep getting ice. Yeah. They didn't follow any of the systems. They kind yeah. of just did whatever they wanted. Yeah. But it's not that easy to score, <laughs> no, <it's... laughs> you know? So uh, you can just take it from there and, and throw your thoughts on it. And we'll see kind of where we go. It's not that easy to score. And if you can, if you can, if you find minor, ho- like it might be a lot easier to score in minor hockey and youth hockey than it is to score once you get to the junior levels and college levels and NHL levels, because uh, and those young, and that's, it's the biggest, it's a, it's almost a trap if you're a, a point getter when you're young for a lot, for some kids. Yeah, can be, yeah. Yeah, because you think, like a lot of goals, like if a kid gets 35 or 50 goals in, as a, a Bantam player or a Pee Wee player, that, as they're not actually 35 or 50 goals because in a real league where you're shooting from and how they go in, that might actually only be 20. Because the goal that you scored just outside the blue line or just inside the blue line because the goalie was smaller isn't actually right. a goal in real life, yeah. right? Or because you were bigger and you could rip one from over the kid's shoulders yeah, yeah. and, you know, his head is hitting the crossbar or he's a smaller goalie and uh, the, the, you just have a harder shot and it went through him. Yeah. Those aren't actual goals. So that, like that's why you have to play the game the right way. So, yeah. and then, uh, then you take that to the higher levels. Now you have good goalies, the best of the best goalies that are like, I'm amazed. Like even on Charlie's team, both goalies were some of the biggest players on the team. Yeah. That seems They're to be six, the... three, six, four, six, yeah. two is a small, like six, one, six, two is not a big goalie anymore. Six, yeah. three, six, four, six, five. That's what you're getting in the nets right now. So just that alone, there's nothing to shoot at. So you have to have movement, right? Yeah. More or less. And then, they're so athletic and their angles are like spot on. So they do very, very minimal movement to stop a puck. It's all about angles. Like it's very hard to score. I think I used this before. Michael Layton, who played in Philadelphia, Carolina, I forget where else. Um, he, he did a practice at the university, university of Windsor. And the guy said he had a shutout to practice. Couldn't score on him. Mm-hmm. That's what a goalie does. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So if you think if you, if you're a goal scorer or a point getter, that's fine but there still has to be other parts of your game. So for me, what is the one quality? Like I always say you have to have three, four, three to five things that you do well on a consistent basis to make an impact on a game, to give yourself a good game, to, to, to quantify, yeah, I played well today. But then with, also within that is you probably have one or two things that you need to be really, really good at. So like I said to you, I don't, or, and I said to Charlie, I said, I don't, I don't, like what I, my goal for you is to be the best third line player in the world. Is, is in the world a big task? I don't know, but that's what your goal is, right? If you can be the best third line player in the world, 
and then add stuff to it, then you could move up and down the lineup and you could play for a long, long time. Yeah. But what is it? Go ahead. Pa- pause. It was like, and who says that? Right. Think about having that. Right. That, the, just think of the the mindset. So for I yeah. just want for I want to stick on it for a sec because yeah. for parents and coaches and players that are listening, like think about think about what that means mentally, like the mental framework that is different when you say I want you to be the best third line player in the yeah. world. It's like that's not that is so different than I want you to be the best player ever. Yeah. In a Hall of Famer, like that yeah. is just a different mindset, yeah. you know. And that doesn't mean you can't add layers, like you yeah. said. But your your base. The base yes. that you're going after is let's yeah. be the best third line player. Yeah. So what does that mean, right? Yeah. So and I want to qualify that statement again. Yep. It's not I, we. I use the term. I want you to be the best third line player. I don't want you to be the best third line you're player. Right, right, right. If you want to be a hockey player, I suggest that you learn to be the best <laughs> third line player right. in the world, so that you can move up and down the lineup with the habits of a third line player, which means what? That means that you're good in your defensive zone. You're good on face-offs that you're good on. uh, You you will block a shot. You will finish a hit. You will go to the front of the net. You will sacrifice your body for a play. You will make plays. You can score a goal, uh, all those different things. So it's, it's, it's um, that's, that's what I mean by that. And then you can get move up and down the lineup. I'm going to use another example is, uh, I was talking to, so Charlie had one of his teammates down last weekend and I was using this as an example and I know Cam listens to this, so I, I, Cam, I'm not saying this anything negative. I'm saying this like it maybe, maybe it'll make sense to you. So Cam Allen on Charlie's team is, uh, he was a third overall pick and he's a really, and you know, you've seen him. He's a really, really, oh, yeah. really good D like really good. And I've worked with, so just a couple of the D that I've worked with or uh, like Aaron Ekblad, uh, Mikhail Sergachev, like they both won Canadian Hockey League, uh, CHL Defenseman of the Year. They're both first and 10th overall in the NHL. Uh, Sergey's won a couple Stanley Cups. They put points up there. They're good D, among other very good D that I've worked with, okay? So if I say, so so let's go back to Cam. So Cam, so he can he put up, I think, 38 or 40 points last year as a rookie. And he finished checks and he got in some fights. So he's got like, it seems like a total package and he can skate. Okay. Now the question is, does Cam's game translate in the National Hockey League as the exact same player? Okay. So now we have to look at it. And so like, and Cam needs to look at this, okay, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just hey, say that question. Say that question again. Does, that, that's a very, very important question. Yeah. No matter what, le- it doesn't just apply to Cam going OHL to NHL. It's, if that is to be the case, it's yeah. any level to any level. Yeah. So it's, say the yeah. question again. So does does the, uh, he's a very complete defenseman? So it appears right now, right? But does that game the way he plays translate unchanged? If he doesn't change, if he doesn't anything. change, does that translate into the right. same player at the NHL level? Right. And I don't know the answer yet because right. I don't know. He's really good. Yeah. Now the question, the next question is, if he got drafted to the Colorado Aval. I'm just using three teams. Let's say Colorado, Tampa Bay, or Florida, or or four teams now. Carolina or New York Rangers or whatever. Okay. Does that translate into a top two D pairing? Well, now you got to ask the question: depends, Are you yeah. better than Aaron Ekblad? He's a right hand D, just like you. Are you better than Sergey? He's a lefty, I think. Yeah, he's a left hand D. Are you are you better than Kale McCarr? Are you better than uh, Adam Fox? Are you better than uh, S- Slavin on Carolina? So the question, the, the, it's not saying, no, you're not. You might be. But in the case that you're not, and, and, and trust me when I say this, and I, again, it's not about Cam. It's about I'm using him because he's such a good player. Every team has a lot of those guys because they've been drafting defensemen for the last 20 years. So there's D that are on that team that's been playing there for 12, right. 13 years that aren't willing to give up their spot, right? So my point is, if you go into the National Hockey League now and you become a, maybe you don't run a power play as well as you thought you did, right? And again, I'm qualifying it because I love this kid. I'm not saying it negative. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying this is reality. What if? 
what if you're just not as good or on a power play as Aaron Ekblad or Kale McCarr or whatever? So now you get the second power play. Or what if they're, What if you're not really at the NHL level or a guy that can run a power play? Okay, can you kill a penalty? Well, if you've never been in that situation because it's not the glory part, if you can't really block shots and do the defensive zone stuff, which he does, then, oh, maybe you're not a valuable NHL player. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So let me do, I can, I'm gonna sharpen it up a little bit. Yeah. So, so re- regardless of where you're playing at what level, so I'm gonna just like generalize it to the next guy. So let's say you're a you're a because you know I get kids all the time at the AAA level that let's say they didn't get drafted now they just want to go make their junior team. It's like okay, first of all, you need to know, figure out how you play. Number one, that's a problem that most kids don't have solved to begin with. But let's say you're you're a top defenseman on your u18 team that you're playing for and next year you want to go play for the local junior team that's a level up if you compare yourself to their top defenseman are you are you still the top defenseman and if you're not then what else do you do that will make you still be valuable to this team if it's not that so to your point if if you've never killed a penalty before because all you did was play first unit power play on your U18 team, well, you're not better than the guy that runs the power play on the junior team. So now can I put you in a a situation where you can kill a penalty? No? Okay, well now I don't need you anymore because I already have a guy that does what you do but better. That's right. You know, and that's where... He's done it longer. He's done it longer. He's older. He's more seasoned. He's whatever. And so if if you can't slide into that position are you still able to play at that level and be effective? And if you're not, then I don't need you. And when people say like, how can I stand out? It's circling back on that question. The way you spelled it out there is like, does this translate to the next level? Does the way I play translate to the next level? Because if it doesn't, then you need to find something else. You need to develop another part of your game so that you'll fit in. And this is where if we go even younger now, where you get the kid that scores 50 goals it's like okay well he could just raise the puck first so if in three years is he still going to be able to do that and the answer is no he's not going to be able to do that so how is he actually playing how is he learning how to play so if you just let if you have the the stud 10 year old that gets to go play in the brick tournament and score all the goals it's like that's cool but in three years he can't play like that anymore right so probably not probably not Right. Unless he's you do a yeah, very rare person that just continually does that, you know. So if he assuming that that's not the case, because it's not for the vast majority, is he developing his game in some other way that's going to map to that next level? That's going to map to that older age group. That's going to map to the higher pace, higher tempo, higher skill level. And if you don't have that covered to some degree, you're no longer valuable. It doesn't matter that you're the second best skill defenseman. Because I can't play you in those minutes anymore, right? So I got to fill that gap with somebody else now. Because now you can't play. You're not. You're not the kind of guy that plays a third right. D pair, right? Yeah. Or a third third that's, position. That's D. right. So you'll so. see that. Like I was, as you're talking, I was just thinking about how many.